Hi, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and in this video, I am going to help you understand what is going on inside your beehive and what you are looking at. We are going to break this down into some really easy to understand categories. We have adult bees, we have baby bees, food, pests. We're going to have sick versus healthy baby bees, sick versus healthy signs of signs of a sick versus healthy queen and signs of a sick versus healthy beehive. Then what I'm going to do is show you some things that look really similar and common things that people get confused about so that you understand the subtle differences between these two. I also have two free downloads for you. The links are in the description of this video. One is your ID guide that has photos of all these things all, as well as brief descriptions of them. The other one is your inspection sheet so that when you're out opening your beehive, you know what to look for. First, we have food. Bees have to eat, right? You're gonna see honey, nectar, bee bread. Nectar is what the bees are gathering from the flowers and it has a lot of moisture still in it. And so it's going to be a liquid inside the cells that doesn't have a capping over it. Once a lot of the moisture has been evaporated, the bees are going to put a capping over it, and that's what we consider honey. And this honey can be harvested, has low moisture content, so you don't have to worry about it going bad, or what we call fermenting. Not only will honey have a capping over it, but it'll be kind of a bumpy capping. You won't be able to see where the hexagon cells' walls are underneath. And this is bee bread. Bee bread is a solid substance. It will have a little bit of a shine to it. It has a mixture of nectar honey as well as pollen. It can vary in color from yellow, orange, red, but it will be a solid substance inside the cell. Next, we have adult bees. There are three different kinds of adult bees you'll see in the hive. The worker bee, which is the female. However, they never mate and they never lay eggs. It is the majority of the bees in the hive. If you're looking in the hive, an easy way to be able to tell whether it's a worker bee or not is to look at all the other bees around it. If all the bees around that bee look just like that bee, then odds are that's a worker bee you're looking at. The next bee is the queen bee. There's usually only one within the beehive. She is about 50% larger than the worker bees. However, she's a little bit longer and has kind of like this heart shape to the bottom half of her or what you might describe as like having wider hips. And then you have the drones. The drones are also about 50% larger than the worker bees, but they're bean shaped. They don't have the point at the bottom because they don't have a stinger. They have very large, what you might describe as eyes, so they're not eyeballs like we have. And not every hive will have drones in it, especially in the springtime or the fall. If you're concerned you're not gonna be able to spot your queen when you're first getting started, then when you buy your bees, ask for a marked queen, which means that there's a paint dot on her back. Next, we have our babies. These are bees that are still developing and haven't hatched yet. There are three stages for these bees which we call brood, egg, larva, and pupa. Eggs are about the shape of a grain of rice. They're white, however, they are very small. On day three, that egg will hatch into a larva, which is this little white worm. That first day when it hatches, it is really, really, really hard to see. However, as they get older, they will get larger and larger. They will also be floating in a pool of royal jelly. So if you have a flashlight and you shine it in the cells, or if it's a sunny day and you rotate the frame around, you might be able to see a little bit of a shine. The final stage is pupa. Bees pupate just like a caterpillar pupates and goes through that transformation to turning into a butterfly. When bees pupate, you won't be able to see into the cell because there's the wax capping over it. Now it's common for people to confuse uh, this pupa versus honey because they both have a capping over it. This is what the pupating bees look like. And you'll see that you will be able to tell that hexagon shape of the cell from underneath the capping. And here is honey that is in a cell with a capping over it versus pupa in a cell with a capping over it. The honey has that bumpy capping over it versus the pupa has that definite little hexagon shape over each capping. There is a difference between worker bee pupa, queen bee pupa, and drone pupa. 
the drone cells are a little bit larger than the worker bee cells. As an experienced beekeeper, you will be able to tell the difference between drone cells and worker bee cells, even if they are empty. But as a novice, an easy way to be able to tell that these are worker bee cells versus drone cells is when there's a capping over it. The drone pupa will have a cap that has a dome shape to it, and the worker bees will be flat. The queen bee hatches out of a cell that looks totally different. It's kind of the shape of a peanut shell, but a little bit smaller and hangs off of the frame. Next, we have pests. There are a, a few common pests. There is the varroa mite, which is a small reddish brown mite. And the majority of the mites, over 90% in the beehive, are going to be found in the cells with the pupa. So you won't be able to see them unless you uncover the cell and pull the pupating bee out. However, some will be on the adult bees walking around the hive. Sometimes you'll be able to see them and sometimes they will be hiding between their segments. Since the majority of the mites are inside the cells with the pupa, your hive can be infested with mites and you won't know it just by looking at your bees. That's why it's important to do mite tests and get a, pop, get a proper sampling. Next, we have small hive beetle. Adult small hive beetle looks like this. It's a small beetle, kind of the size and shape of a ladybug, maybe a little bit smaller, all black. The bees can't sting them because they have a hard exterior because they are a beetle. When they are in the larva stage, they look like this, similar to honeybee larva. They're very small, little worms. However, they are not inside the cells. They are squirming all over the hive and their feces is, uh, produces the slime. Another common pest is wax moth. The adult wax moth looks like this light grayish brown moth and their larva look like uh, similar to a small hive beetle larva these small little white worms. However, the wax moth larvae can get to be really large, whereas the small hive beetle larvae are always very small. Another sign of wax moth is a webbing like this that you'll see across the cells. Small hive beetle larvae will produce this slime. But either way, you don't want either of them in the hive. So if you see a frame that has them on it, you want to remove the frame out of your hive. If you're not using foundation or you're using beeswax foundation, you can cut the section that it has infestation out of the hive and leave the rest of the frame and the honeycomb that ha doesn't have the infestation on it. Next, we have sick versus healthy brood. Doing a varroa mite test is a great way to tell whether you have a mite infestation. And the reason why you want to know if your hive is infested with mites is because varroa mites bring diseases. The mite leaches onto the bees and they will transfer the viruses to the bees. And then they will go onto other hives and that's how these viruses get spread from colony to colony. Hives with high varroa mite levels are often going to have a lot of viruses within the hive as well. Signs that you have sick or unhealthy brood is that you're going to have cells with uh, little holes poked into the capping. Or you're going to have cells where you can see the face of the bee staring back at you because there is no capping over the cell, but the bee is not in the larva stage anymore. There's also just this beekeeper intuition. You're going to have hives that are healthy, the population is strong, bees are coming and going, and you have a high activity. And you're going to see what the frames in this hive look like. And then maybe a month to go by, or you're going to open up another hive, and you're going to see that the frames look a little bit different. And that there's not as much activity, and there's not as much of buzzing, or the buzzing is a little angry, or the bees seem agitated. And you're going to see that the brood looks a little bit different. It might be a little bit of the coloring, or a little bit of the sheen. There are some very subtle signs to unhealthy brood. And when you see unhealthy brood, you just want to take some steps to figure out what's wrong. Um, taking a beekeeping class, having a mentor, you can sign up for my online class to have someone to talk to about this. But some really quick ways to troubleshoot what's wrong with your hive is to do a mite test to see if there's a mite infestation because that can let you know if there are viruses. Then you can also test for nosema and tracheal mites. And those are some of the big ones that'll let you know if those are the issues within your hive. 
Next is, is your queen healthy or unhealthy? And the way you're gonna be able to tell if your queen is healthy versus unhealthy is in her laying, because after all, that's what she does. She lays eggs. And if she is not laying enough eggs, or she has a spotty laying pattern, or she's laying unfertilized eggs, then you have a problem. And you're going to want to pinch your queen and put in a new one. Well, an unhealthy laying pattern might look like this. It, you're going to see a lot of eggs in one cell. Or you are going to see an egg in a cell and then a gap and then another egg in a cell and a gap and another egg in a cell. And that's because the queen will lay in a spiral pattern. Now, you might see capped pupa with gaps and that's because the bees are hatching and so um, it's okay to see holes within the pupa, but if you are seeing a lot of gaps and empty cells amongst your larva and eggs, then that is a problem because that is a sign of an unhealthy queen. If you are seeing a lot of drone pupa and drones within your hive that are hatching and very few worker bees or no worker bees, then that's a sign that you have either a queen that hasn't properly mated and so isn't laying fertilized eggs for the worker to produce worker bees, or you do not have a queen and one of your worker bees is laying and she is producing, laying unfertilized eggs, which is producing drones. Healthy laying will look like this. You will see lots of eggs, lots of larva, lots of pupa, all together in big sections. If you're having trouble finding your eggs or larva, an easy way to do it is to look for the pupa and then to look next to it for the larva and next to that for the eggs. And finally, signs of a healthy hive are signs of activity coming and going from the hive. You do have to consider the time of year uh, when the hive is small because they are slowly building up from winter time, which we would usually describe as springtime, your hive is going to be small and the activity is going to be low. However, once there's lots of flowers blooming and your hive population should be high, you should see sufficient lots of activity coming and going. And then once the hive starts to slow down because it is late summer or fall and there's not a lot of flowers blooming, either it's getting colder out or because it's getting like super hot or dry and there's a lot of flowers falling off, the activity will slow down. Other than that, you should see a high activity, especially in the early summer and late spring. If you do not see a high activity coming and going from the hive, that is a sign that your hive is weak. A strong hive should also be bringing in ample food and building honeycomb. Again, in the early spring and the later summer, early fall months, this is going to be slower. However, in the times of year when you have lots of flowers blooming, the bees should be building honeycomb, they should be expanding, and they should be bringing in more food. One easy way to tell this is to fill out an inspection sheet week to week and see how the amount of frames of honey that you're writing down are increasing over the course of the weeks. Another sign of a healthy versus unhealthy hive is the buzzing sound. Now this is just something you're going to have to get used to. Every single week when you inspect your hive, listen for the sound. Some people try not to bother their hives too much. Now I don't think you should open your hives for a long period of time. 20 minutes is the maximum. However, you should open them at least every other week to start just to get used to what it is like to handle the bees and be around them and what your hive looks like. There might be times when you can't do it as often because you're on vacation or something is going on, your life is very busy, but should for the majority of the season, you are checking on your bees once, to, once every one to two weeks. Even when you're not opening the hive to inspect them, spend time outside your hive watching the bees come and go, seeing how many bees are bringing in pollen on their legs, passing nectar off to each other, the buzzing sound that they are making. Another sign of how healthy versus unhealthy your colony is, is how agitated they are. Just like us, when you are not feeling well, you are not in a good mood, it is the same thing for bees. If there is something stressing them out, if there is an environmental issue, they are going to be agitated. If they have a lot of viruses, if they have a high viral mite level, they are going to be agitated. That means they are going to be flying around your face, they might be stinging you, they might be making a loud buzzing no noise that just kind of sounds angry to you. Um, 
as soon as you take the lid off the hive, they might come right at you. These are signs of bees being aggressive, unhappy, agitated. Bees that are calm, that is a sign that they are healthy, they are busy, they have stuff to do, and they are not so angry at you. Now, just because your bees are a little angry doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. You really just want to monitor this. And there are things like a lack of food for them to bring in or a very overpopulated hive. And you just want to keep an eye on it. And if they are agitated or very aggressive for weeks and weeks, then it's something that you want to take a look at and figure out what's wrong. I will say that when your bees are in a good spot and there is ample food, it is very easy to manage your hives. The bees are usually pretty healthy and they are happy and they are content. When there is not a lot of food for them to gather, that can be confused as the hive being unhealthy because there's just they're not going to grow when they don't have the resources to grow. So, when considering where to put your bees, do not just put them in a place be out of your convenience, but out of a place where they can thrive. It's hard to tell what is going to be a good spot versus a not good spot, but if your bees aren't thriving, consider moving them to another location to help your bees grow. And this is especially the case if you're checking for nosema, tracheal mites, varroa mites, and you can't find anything wrong with your bees, then the location is probably the problem. I hope this helps you in your journey to keeping bees and understanding what you're looking at when you open a beehive. Thanks for watching. Check out my online beekeeping course. It's free for the first month. And then after that, you can pay for the month, a year or forever membership. And you can contact me whenever you like with questions. See you next time. Bye.